Hi everyone. Today I'll show you how you can connect a Hall Effect sensor to an Arduino and use it with an interrupt. If you are new around here, consider subscribing. I make weekly videos of electronics, code and general making and I'm sure you'll find something of an interest. A Hall Effect sensor is a device that is used to measure the magnitude of a magnetic field. Its output voltage is directly proportional to the magnetic field strength to it. Hall effect sensors are used for proximity sensing, positioning, speed detection and current sensing applications. The one I'll be working with today is labeled as 3144, which is a Hall effect switch primarily used for high temperature and automotive applications. Its output is high by default and goes low once in presence of magnetic field. The sensor has three pins, VCC, ground and output. You can identify them in that order if you hold the sensor with the labels towards you. VCC is on the left and the output is on the right side. To prevent any voltage drift, a 10K resistor is being used between VCC and the output in a pull-up configuration. To connect the sensor on the Arduino, we will use a simple yet very powerful feature called interrupt. An interrupt job is to make sure that the processor responds quickly to important events. When a certain signal is detected, an interrupt, as the name suggests, interrupts whatever the processor is doing and executes some code designed to react to whatever external stimulus is being fed to the Arduino. Once the code has wrapped up, the processor goes back to whatever it was originally doing as if nothing happened. What's awesome about this is that it structures your system to react quickly and efficiently to important events that aren't easy to anticipate in software. Best of all, it frees up your processor for doing other stuff while it's waiting on the event to show up. The Arduino Uno has two pins that we can use as interrupts, pin 2 and 3. The function that we use to register the pin as an interrupt is called attached interrupt, whereas the first parameter we send in the pin to be used, second parameter is the name of the function that we want to call once an interrupt is detected, and as a third parameter we send in the mode at which we want the interrupt to work. There is a link in the video description to the full reference for this function. In our example, we connect the Hall Effect sensor to pin 2 on the Arduino. At the beginning of the sketch, we define the variables for the pin number of the built-in LED, the interrupt pin, as well as the byte variable that we will use to modify through the interrupt. It is crucial that we mark this one as volatile, so the compiler can know that it's being modified outside of the main program flow through the interrupt. In the setup function, we first specify the modes on the pins used and then we attach the interrupt as previously explained. One other function that we use here is digital pin to interrupt, which, as the name implies, translate the pin number to the interrupt number. In the main method, we just write the state variable on the LED pin and add a very small delay so the processor can have time to work properly. Where we attach the interrupt, we specify blink as the second parameter and this is the function name to be called. Inside, we just invert the state value. The third parameter of the attach interrupt function is the mode at which it operates. When we have it as change, the blink function will be executed each time the interrupt state changes, so it will be once called once we get the magnet close to the sensor and triggered again once we remove it. This way, the LED is on while we hold the magnet close to the sensor. If we now change the mode to rising, the blink function will only be triggered once a rising edge of the signal is seen on the interrupt pin. Now, every time we bring the magnet close to the sensor, the LED either turns off or turns on, so we basically made a magnetic switch. The final mode that we're gonna try is low. With it, when the magnet is closed, the blink function will be constantly triggered and the LED will flicker, having its state inverted all the time. When we remove the magnet, it's really unpredictable how the state will end up as this is dependent on the timing. However, this mode is really useful if we need to know for how long a button was pressed as we can use timing functions to determine that. Interrupts are a simple way to make your system more responsive to time-sensitive tasks. 
They also have the added benefit of freeing up your main loop to focus on some primary task in the system. I find that this tends to make my code a little more organized when I use them. It's easier to see what the main chunk of code was designed for, while the interrupts handle periodic events. The example shown here is just about the most basic case for using an interrupt. You can use them for reading an iScore C device, sending or receiving wireless data, or even starting or stopping a motor. If you have an interesting use of an interrupt or a Hall effect sensor, then be sure to let me know in the comments. Like and share the video, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials and projects in the future. Cheers, and thanks for watching.